preach from this 10th verse from this subject blind watchmen dumb dogs blind watchmen dumb dogs I hope that doesn't upset your sensibilities I just read it in the Bible Father, bless us now. May we do no damage to your word, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Blind watchmen. Dumb dogs. Can you say amen? amen. This message um, today is about the seemingly increasing blindness that is taking place all over the body of Christ. One of the things that's accounting for the blindness is that we made a mistake and we began to allow the world to interpret scripture to us. In times past, until recently, the most popular scripture in the Bible, the most popular, were John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Psalms 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. God bless Mother Marshall. So good to see you, Mother. So good to see you today, praying for you. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's, those scriptures have been surpassed uh, by Matthew's gospel, chapter 7 and um, verse 1. It's the new most popular scripture in the Bible is judge not. That you be not judged. Even those who can't find it. <laughs> quote it. But they eisegete it. And not exegete it. When Jesus was talking in the Sermon on, on the Mount. He was not speaking about against. He wasn't prohibiting making judgments. You can't live without making judgments. You can't live without having the ability to discern between right and wrong. That's what a judgment is. Um, that's, uh, actually, that's, that's, that's what discrimination is. Every, somebody says, well, I'm against discrimination. Discrimination is wrong. Discrimination is not wrong. Discrimination on basis of race is wrong. But you discriminate every time you choose Kroger over Harris Teeter. Right. Or Food Line instead of A&P. You go to Rite Aid, A&P's gone in. Right. Well, I started to say Winn-Dixie. <laughs> Balo? Okay. They're helping me, Bilo, Piggly Wiggly, IGA. Um, uh, but, you, you know, um, it, is, it is the ability to choose. And what has happened is, because we've been so afraid of being accused of being judgmental, which is to come to a conclusion without knowing the fact. You're judgmental when you look at me and assume things about me without knowing me. That's being judgmental. I was at the hospital one day 
had visited someone. On my way out, I stopped by the men's room, and I was uh, <clears throat> standing at the urinal there in the bathroom. I've got to tell you that point so you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and a, a white gentleman walked in with his grandson. And uh, as I was standing there, the grandchild looked at me and pointed up at me, and he said, Grandpa, a criminal. <laughs> you know, I couldn't move. <laughs> so I looked back, I said, what did he say? The child meant no harm. The child had been conditioned by its parents to assume that everybody who looks like me is a criminal. Now you have to, you won't like this part. You have to give them a little bit of credit though because if you go by the news, you, know, <laughs> you see a steady parade of folk looking like us doing dumb criminal things. Behavior creates stereotypes. But he, he judged me. That's, he, did, he didn't know that I'm a man of God. But to him, I was a criminal. So for fear of being like the little boy who pointed at the preacher and said, a criminal, we are losing our ability to make judgments. And we, you've got to be able to make judgments. One of the worst judgments that you can ever make is to conclude, to come to the conclusion that you don't judge anything. That is in itself a judgment. To conclude that you do not judge is a judgment. So you're saying that you're wiser than God. For God have determined that certain acts to be wrong, certain acts to be right, certain behaviors to be good, certain behaviors to be bad. If you then decide that there, there's, there are no distinctions in behavior and nothing is worthy of either being right or wrong, then you have put yourself place yourself on a higher level than God. And you have made a judgment that you will never live up to because you can't live without being able to decide whether deeds are good or bad. And the people who say, I don't judge, I don't make any judgments, I don't have any opinion on that, let somebody cut line in front of them. Let them go to a restaurant and don't get the service that they deserve. You know what they do? They make judgments. Mm -hmm. So many, uh, there's an increasing blindness because we're trying to get rid of or let go of moral issues, right and wrong. Too many preachers are becoming um, motivational speakers. And the church service is one that's just designed to encourage you, make you feel better about yourself, whether you should feel better about yourself or not. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 10, I'm off uh, in the weeds a little bit here, but it makes the point. The Bible says, Speaking of the rebellious children of Israel, verse 10 says, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. They says, don't preach right. That is, don't preach ethics. Don't preach about ethical things. Don't deal with issues of right and wrong. Don't deal with doctrinal issues. Don't deal with issues that govern our behavior. But instead, prophesy unto us smooth things. That is, preach flattering things to us. Preach complimentary things. Preach comforting things. And in the attempt today to be a Comfort. Many of us today are blind. 
more to the point, it is also, it is about the constantly increasing lack of willingness in church, in the church, of church leaders. Today, to this message deal with the lack of willingness for church leaders to speak up and be the gatekeepers that God has called us to be. It is harder and harder to find a preacher who will preach God's truth. And believe it or not, saints, people want to hear the word of God. Amen. Believe it or not, there will always be an appetite for God's truth. The prophet Amos said this about people after God says he was going to send a famine. He said this about people's response to the famine for the word of the Lord. He says, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. That's Amos chapter 8 and verse 12. That is, they will run to and fro from the Dead Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. From the north to the east, literally all throughout Israel's territory to hear the word of the Lord. To hear a word of explanation, a word of forgiveness, a word of correction a word of hope. People want to hear God's truth. We're in a time where many voices speak for God, but few speak God's truth. They're not speaking from God. They claim to speak for him, but they're not telling the truth. They stand behind podiums. We call preachers but they're not speaking the word of God. As I have said before, it is the will of Satan to silence God's preacher, to silence the man or the woman of God. And our text describes the worst situation for a church leader. And that is for that leader to be blind and dumb. Blind and dumb. That's, uh, that's, that's the pits. That's, that's the worst. Jesus said this in uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 15, uh, verse 12 and down. It says, then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this? Jesus preached and the Pharisees who were members of the Sanhedrin, who were the religious leaders of that day. The word Pharisee literally means separated ones, uh, uh, righteous ones. These, these righteous, separated Pharisees, when they heard Jesus preach, instead of saying amen, they got offended. So the disciples came to Jesus and said, do you not know that you, you offended the Pharisees? Our Lord's reply was an interesting one. Jesus said unto them, verse 13, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be uprooted. And then the Lord said, you know what he, you know what he actually said, don't you? The Lord says, they're not, they're not even a part of God's kingdom anyway. He denied that the father had ever even planted them even though they were Pharisees and all of their religious garb and they were supposed to be the righteous leaders of the day. But when they rejected Jesus' message and they rejected God's truth, Jesus says, the reason they rejected my truth is because I, the Father, have never planted them in the first place. Isn't it amazing the number of church leaders who disagree with God? Then the next verse says, Jesus didn't say win them to the Lord. Jesus says, Leave them alone. Let them alone. For they be, O oh English, for they are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, then both shall fall into the ditch. A blind church leader is a bad thing. Amen. Two blind 
to see, too blind to discern danger. Therefore, dumb, that is mute, because they don't see it, then they can't give the warning. So blind that they don't see what Satan is doing. So therefore, they don't warn you of what Satan is doing. They're too blind to see what God is doing. Therefore, they don't tell you what God is doing. People can't tell you about that which they haven't seen and they don't know. Amen. I cannot warn you of a danger that I do not see. Nor can I tell you of a blessing that I have not heard about. These leaders were uh, blind. Therefore, they were dumb. They were mute. Matthew Henry said this, they bark at God's prophets, bite them, and worried the sheep, but made no opposition to the wolf or the thief. I've said this before, it is more popular today for preachers to preach against preachers who preach the truth than it is for preachers to preach against sin. I have received much persecution for agreeing with God from preachers. And yet these same preachers, when it comes to people who are committing sins and acts that God says is wrong, they look at them and say, who am I to judge? But will say about the preacher who preaches the scripture, he is too judgmental or he's too hard. These blind leaders said nothing to warn the people about the wolves that were coming. They had nothing to say about the wolves, but they had a whole lot to say against the prophet Isaiah. Oh my. Someone else said this. Watchmen were supposed to keep the wild animals away from the crops. But these watchmen, the ones of our text, Israel's leaders were ineffective, silent, mute dogs, and asleep. This comment made by the Holman Christian Study Bible. Priests and prophets in the Bible were often called watchmen. Hear me today. The God of the Bible said this to the prophet Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17, God says this, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the watchman. Look at this. The watchman has to be able to watch, but it has to be able to hear. As a matter of fact, the watchman was so trained in their hearing skills that they could determine the difference by hearing in an approaching army or enemy and an approaching animal. They were trained seers and listeners. Watchmen. He says, I have made you a watchman. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Watchmen were lookouts. They watched for approaching danger. They were posted on high places and such as roofs of gatehouses and they were placed on towers. The watchmen were elevated so that they could see things that the people could not see. Would you turn quickly with me to Ezekiel chapter 33? And I want to show you this uh, in verse 1 of the 33rd chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. It says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Say unto them, when I bring a sword upon the land, if the people of the land... Take, take a man of their coast. The man needs to be one of them. And 
set him for their watchman. If when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning. His blood shall be upon him. But if he, uh, but he that taketh warnings shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned and if the sword come and take away any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the hand of the watchman. At the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth. And warn them from me. I am the watchman here. This is why I warn you the way that I do. See, God sets the watchman. This is why no one in the church should try to match sights with the watchman. Because you're not on the tower. You're not on the tower. No matter what position you hold, you're not on the tower. You can't see. And that's why when the watchman sound the alarm, your job is to respond. So that you can save yourself, not argue me down, not try to turn the watchman, not try to take the trumpet out of my hand, not try to change my mind, but thank God for the watchman. And don't you know, at times, don't you know during those times, there were times when the watchman blew the trumpet at times when it was not convenient. They had a picnic schedule. They had a service schedule. They had this schedule. They had that schedule. Somebody was getting ready to get married, and all of a sudden, bah, the watchman blows the trumpet. The guy said, this can't be happening now. I'm getting ready to get married. Folks say, wedding is over. The watchman has sound the alarm. So we must adjust to save our lives. And then there were times when people paid no attention to the watchman. And they were destroyed. But no blood was on the watchman's hand. I don't want your blood on my hand when I stand before God. I want to be able to say, Lord, I told them. Lord, I said it. Some said amen. Some said oh me. Some left the church. Some called me a great preacher. And Lord, some called me a low down dirty dog. But I said it. I sound the alarm. Once I've done that, I've done what the law had required of me to do. The watchman can't escape for you. The watchman can't run for you. The watchman is not even responsible for how people respond to the warning. He's just called to give it. As you can see, among the duties of the watchman was to wait and watch for what God would give in a command or in a warning. Our job is to see what God has to say about a thing. Another duty of the watchman was to watch over and superintend the people. Are you praying for me? It was to, another duty was to warn the people of God. Watchmen, therefore, could not be lazy. Nothing as bad as a lazy preacher. Could not be lazy. Can't love ease. 
I don't like lazy preachers. All they do is eat. <laughs> Stomach steady getting bigger. Don't appear to have any discipline in their life whatsoever. This is not good. The watchman had to be ready. And the watchman could not love ease. And the watchman could not be lovers of sleep. I just read it in the text. They had, everybody have to sleep. But you don't want the watchman asleep when, he's, when it's time to be watching. Amen. Watchmen watched so that the people could sleep. Let me, let me wrap this up because I think I'm getting a little bit too heavy for some and I'm challenging your sensibilities and I, I see you reaching for your purse. I see you grabbing your Bible and saying, man, I think I better get out of here. This guy's he's, he's a little rough. Uh, um, but uh, I still don't like a lazy preacher. I think it's bad for the profession. Amen. Um, we've got to be before the Lord on our posts. Souls are at stake. So many things are going on now. So many things are going on now. So many things are going on. Who would have thought we'd ever see a, a presidential candidate, a man running for the office, married to a man? I don't know what's going on in Iowa. Married to a man and getting big support. Uh, hopefully not nationwide, but, but at least in one state. Uh, that ought to, that, that, that with me, that's, ain't no point in you saying anything else. So who is this guy with you? Oh, that's my husband. That's who? Everything else you say to me is, is in a foreign language. Amen. There's no way in this world. There's no way in this world. I, I would. I, no way in this world. Just. Just no way. We things are. Things are, are happening. Um, but in in our text, let me let me let me get to this. And we, we're going home. Um, our text is filled with good news. So it starts out with God's promise of redemption, but also saints our duty to him as a result of that redemption promise. See, in this day of unconditional love, we have given the idea that the believer has no responsibilities and that we have no duty toward God, that God is just going to bless you anyhow, no matter what. But if the Lord has something for you, there is a duty that, 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 that accompanies the duty on our part. There is a certain response that, that, that the Lord is looking for uh, from us. That's something that he wants us to do as a result of the wonderful redemption that he's bringing our way. See, you can't work to be saved. Salvation is not of works. But I tell you what, we do have works because we are saved. See, my, my good works don't save me, but the good works follow. They accompany my salvation. See, when, when people claim to be saved and they hadn't changed, nothing has happened, nothing's changed, they hadn't been saved yet. Because when you get saved, you'll get right. So, oh, I've been saved, I've been saved uh, 30 years, and you're still drinking and smoking. No, you hadn't. Uh -uh. Now, you might have been religious 30 years, but when Jesus saves you, when Jesus saves you, he saves you to bring you out. When folk get saved, things change. I can't get an amen in here. Praise the Lord. In this day, see, everything now is upon condition, but I hear the Lord say, thus saith the Lord, number one, keep my judgments and do justice. Look at our duty. So, for my salvation is, is near to come and my righteousness uh, to be revealed. God's salvation, my salvation, my righteousness. These terms were, were terms uh, in, in terms of prophecy. And it has a messianic tone. It deals, dealt with, deals with the salvation that Jesus 
was bringing. Amen. And in real time, it was dealing with God, the deliverance from the Assyrians and deal, de dealing with the national deliverance that God would bring Israel. But he speaks of his salvation. And notice what he says. There's a duty tied to it. The duty is keep my judgments. Keep my judgments. And do justice. And he says this. You want to be blessed? Blessed is the man that doeth this. Blessed is the man. Happy is the man. The happy is the human being who keeps my judgments. And the son of man that lay hold on it. I told them today in their leadership that the Bible is my standard. Praise the Lord. Everything I compare to the Bible. But I compare the Bible to nothing because the Bible is the standard. It is the fixed. See, it's fixed. It's fixed. If the thing don't line up with the Bible, I'm through with it. Bring me an ideology or a doctrine or a way of thinking that is antithetical to Scripture. I won't receive it because the fixed thing is the Bible. I'm not going to... Uh, uh, investigate the Bible. Well, someone have told me uh, something, and I've heard these uh, five percenters and these woke people and these other folk, and they've said some things, and they, they don't believe that the Bible is what it claimed to be. I wouldn't what you think. I think they're crazy because the Bible is fixed. God said forever is his word settled in heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I read a few passages of scripture in the Quran. I might need to go back and see what the Bible says again. Not me. Not me. Not me. Nothing makes me re-examine the scripture. Not for truth. I might re-examine the scripture for, so I can respond to this crazy man because maybe I, I forgot what the Bible said, but I'm not going to re-examine the scripture to see if the Bible is right. Because that's already settled. When you get saved, when you get saved and you've been saved for a minute, you are, it's settled. It's settled in your heart that the word of God is right. A man stopped me one day and said, Bishop, we, not, we said, said, Pastor Wooden, uh, uh, we need to have a, a, a summit. We need to have a summit. I said, for what? He said, we need to have a summit. And this was a few years ago. And we need to go back and look at the scriptures and, and see what the Bible says about homosexuality. We need to have a summit. I said, for what? I said, no, we don't. I'm not, I'm not going to that. For what? It said today what it said yesterday. Ain't nothing change. Praise the Lord. You can read it right side up, upside down, inside out, forward and backwards. Thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. Whosoever does is an abomination. Now, what? What? How many times do you need to examine that? No, I'll I tell you what's happening. People are losing faith in the scripture. Don't you lose your faith in the word of God. Don't you let anybody cause you to doubt the Bible. Well, you know, you know, Jesus is not Lord because you know there's something about the letter J. The letter J wasn't even... Like, like all letters wasn't made up. All the letters of the alphabet, somebody, they, were, they, weren't, they didn't just drop out the sky. I know that Jesus is real. And I know that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if you want to be happy, Lay hold on the word of God. Praise the Lord. When he said keep my Sabbath, this is not to just be limited to the observance on that Saturday, but keep my Sabbath is actually, uh, it is, it literally means obey my word. Keep it from polluting it. Don't do things on the Sabbath that I told you not to do. And keep his hand from doing any evil. Neither, God says this, neither let the son of the stranger. This is good stuff right here. And I'm, I'm getting ready to, Rocky, don't go far. We're going we're gonna to bring it home. But you know, God is concerned about the Gentile. 
said, neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak and said, the Lord have separated me from his people. What he's dealing with here was that some of the Gentiles who had left their pagan gods, left their false religion, and joined themselves to the Christian band, Judaism at the time, joined themselves. They were concerned that since they were not children of the covenant, that is, Jews by birth, they were concerned that when God got ready to pass out blessings, that he might separate them or exclude them. And the Lord wanted the Gentile to know that if you keep my word, and if you obey me, doesn't matter to me whether you are Gentile or Jew, I'll bless you the same. You know, I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, my, my mama wasn't married to my daddy when I was born. Praise God. I'm illegitimate. I'm, praise God, uh, a bastard. Hallelujah. But one day, I made Jesus my choice. He saved me. And I was like the song, I came to Jesus as I was. Weary, wounded, and sad. From the little Philadelphia section of Rockingham, which is called the wrong side of the tracks. But I found in him a resting place. And he made me glad sanctified me, called me to preach, ordained me, made me a pastor, made me a superintendent, good God almighty, made me a doctor of theology, and then made me a bishop in the church of God in Christ, and then gave me a voice to tell the world with my illegitimate self that came nobody's savior but Jesus. I just want to hear some of the folk in my situation. Everybody's going to praise them in a minute. But, but, if, but if you happen to be one of those who your mama wasn't married to your daddy, but Jesus still saved you anyway and raised you up and blessed you real good, can I, get a, can I hear a praise from you? Now let everybody praise the Lord. Woo! See, if you do right, this is the point, if you do right, he won't put a difference between you. Well, pastor, you don't know, I've, I've, I've done wrong, I, I've been this and I've been that, I've been into homosexuality, I've had an abortion, I've done time, I've done this and I've done that. Paul said, and such were some of you, but now you are washed, you are justified, you are sanctified in Christ Jesus. I need to hear about 10 or 20, maybe 200, 300, maybe a thousand folk are better to shout, the Lord brought me out. Ah. Praise the Lord. No, sir. Jesus, Jesus, he don't walk through the audience. He, he doesn't walk through the congregation and see uh, where uh, your background. He want to know who's obeying me. So I got blessings in my hand. I got my po pockets full of blessings. I got salvation on the way. I got things I want to pass out. I just want to see who's living for me. If you're living right, doesn't matter what's in your past. If you're walking up right, he will bless you. And then I heard him, I heard him. He said, not only am I going to overlook, I'm going to include the Gentile. But I heard him say, I'm going to look out for the eunuch. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get a, a prayer in church to say thank you, Jesus? Yes, sir. He says, neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord, the eunuch that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold to my covenant 
even unto them will I give, O oh Lord, in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. What are you talking about here, Reverend? What is Jesus saying? What is the Bible saying? You know, the eunuch uh, in uh, biblical times, eunuchs were thought of as being men who were of no use because eunuchs couldn't have children. And they didn't have children, and most likely they wouldn't have any. And to make the eunuchs way even harder, priests were not allowed to be eunuchs. A eunuchs were not allowed to be priests, excuse me. And if you read Leviticus chapter 20 and chapter 21, and the, 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 eunuchs, the, the eunuchs couldn't be priests, and they couldn't even enter into the assembly. And I got something for the transgender crowd. Deuteronomy 23 and 1 said, He that is wounded in his stones and hath any and hath his privacy, his private members cut off, he shall not enter into the congregation of the law. All I can tell you is you better be glad you're not under the law. Because if you mess yourself up like that, you couldn't even enter into the temple. What does that tell you about God's feelings about a man letting them cut off his manhood? You know that's the devil. You know that's the devil. Most men would rather die than to lose down there. And now you got men who will voluntarily let them remove his family. The devil is a liar. But let me get back to this. The eunuchs didn't have any family and the eunuchs uh, didn't marry, so they considered the eunuchs to be a dry tree. But God said even to the eunuchs, I'm gonna remember you. He said, thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs, if you obey my word, and here's the key, choose those things that please me, and then take hold of my covenant. I'm gonna give you a name. Why is it so important for a, a, a eunuch to have a name? Because they didn't have any children. They didn't have any, uh, any kids. They had no posterity. They had no one but themselves. And when the eunuch died, that was the end of everything. That was the end of his family. But God says, I'm going to give you a name that won't even be cut off. And he said in verse 5 to the eunuchs, I'm going to give you an everlasting name. Isn't it a wonderful thing that the God of the Bible has a blessing for everyone who will obey him. Doesn't matter how low you've been. Doesn't matter what your situation is. If you just do right, if you let Jesus save you, if he could give the eunuchs an inheritance even though they had no children if he could still give them could give them a name what do you think God can do for you if you just serve the Lord God told me to tell you today he said tell those who are at the bottom tell those who are going through he said highlight them choose those things that please me you have choices that you can make you have choices you can get with him or you can get with her you can choose to drink this or you can choose to drink that you can choose to do right or you can choose to do wrong you can choose left or right north or south east or west but the wisest choice that you can make is to choose those things that please the Lord when you choose those things that, that please the Lord sometimes your way get a little hard sometimes your friends get few sometimes you have to stand alone but if you stay with that choice if you just hold on to the Lord's hand God knows how to bless you hallelujah the devil wants us to believe that the way up 
is through compromise. The devil wants you to believe that you got to take a shortcut to get what God has for you. But the Lord is saying, forget about the shortcuts. Just choose those things that please me and do them. You may know about somebody else who is serving in the church, but they're not living right. He's slipping around with that woman. She's slipping around with that man. They're doing things that they ought not to do. And you know how the devil is. He'll try to make you think that they're getting over. But saints, pay that stuff no attention. You you just keep your eyes on Jesus. You just do those things that please the Lord. For when the dust clears, when the smoke clears, and the dust settles, you'll be left standing. You'll be left blessed. You'll be left promoted. You'll be left healed. You'll be left on the top and not on the bottom. You'll be left being the head and not the tail. God knows how to bless you in the city and to bless you in the field. He knows how to bless your going and to bless your coming. All you got to do is just choose those things that please the Lord. Just ask yourself when you gotta make a choice. Will God be pleased if I do this? Will God be pleased if I go there? If God will God be pleased if I say this or say that? If it doesn't please the Lord, let it go. If it don't please the Lord, throw it away and just wait on him. Somebody throw your hands up and say, Lord, I'm going to wait right here. All the days of my appointed time, shall I wait till my end come, till my change come? Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Let me hear you praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm going to bless. I'm going to bless the Jew. I'm going to bless my people. I'm going to bless the Gentile. I'm going to bless the stranger. I'm going to bless the eunuch. I'm going to reach out to the outcasts of Israel and bring them in. My house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. And then after God gives this blessing, gives, speaks of this coming salvation, speaks of our duty toward it, then the text takes a sharp turn. A sharp turn. God begins to rebuke the watchman. He begins to highlight the enemy. There are enemies out there. There are demon spirits. There are people in the field. There are animals who don't want you to get what God has for you. Yes, there are. Amen. Tell God thank you. There are things out there. There are forces that don't want you to get what God has for you. He called them in verse 9, beast of the field. <laughs> yes, sir. They're the beast of the field. They come to devour. Yea, all the beasts of the forest. Upper room, the Lord have watched over us all through 2019. And we're coming down to the close of this year. Hallelujah. We've seen many things. We've seen the lightning flash and we've heard the thunder roll but the Lord has been faithful been through sickness hallelujah but mother God is with you Keisha God is with you been through death in your family but look at where you're standing 
district missionary, the Lord is still with us. Can I get a witness? People have suffered losses. People have suffered gains. And the Lord is still with us. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's another blessing that is on the way. But I want to warn you because I am your watchman. I see the beasts in the field. I see them coming to try to devour you, to come to try to separate you from God's truth. I want to tell you, as your watchman, hold on to God's unchanging hand. I want to tell you, church, let's remain a holiness church. Let's keep on shouting. Let's keep on praising God. Let's keep on living holy. Let's remain a sanctified church. We're not going to take the crosses out. We're not going to darken the church. We're not going to act like Kanye West and have church like a hip hop club. The devil is a liar. We're not going the way of the world, but we're going to stand on the word of God because all of these trends, they are nothing but beasts in the field. They are the enemy. They want to rob you of your anointing. But I stand as your watchman. I'm not blind. I can see. I'm not dumb. I'm not muted. I have a voice. And I'll tell you what God said. Be holy. Be holy. Be holy. Be holy. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Woo. I need a few people to shout holy. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't want to be like those blind watchmen. Preachers who have no opinion. Preachers who won't speak up. Preachers who won't. I had a white preacher come to me yesterday. He was telling me about black preacher friend of his who loves the Lord. He's a good preacher. We're at the clinic. He said to me, but Reverend, I can't get him to come to the clinic. I can't even get him to even preach on it. And the white man said, and Reverend, it's killing most of your people. I said, what you said this guy was? Say he's a good guy. He loves the Lord. I said, tell him that Bishop Wooden said he's a coward. Tell, tell him I want to talk to him. Tell him I said he's blind. I already, I'd already prepared my, my message. Tell him I said he's a blind watchman and a dumb dog because you can't do that. How you gonna be quiet? How you gonna be quiet? How you gonna not warn the people? Well, if he says something about it, he may lose his job. That's what the text said. Said they, said they were in it for themselves. That's what the text says. Says they were in it for themselves, for their own, they they looked to their own way. Everyone for his own, for his gain. Verse eleven says. Verse verse ten says his watchmen. They're blind. They're ignorant. They're dumb dog mute. Not dumb as in stupid, but mute. They cannot bark. Sleeping lazy. Play golf all day lazy. Lying down. And loving slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have a nerve. That is, they are self serving. And are shepherds that cannot understand. How you gonna how you gonna be neutral on I mean, all the preachers, I was told about all the preachers in D.C. who lined up behind 
uh, same-sex marriage. Back when Obama was pushing it. All the preachers. All the preachers in Chicago who helped vote in a lesbian mayor. Dumb dogs. They, they, got, they, got, they got the endorsement of the clergy. Blind watchmen. And when you talk to them, they struggle. The Bible says, it's, see, let me tell you, one of the greatest things, one of the worst things that can happen to you is to have your understanding darkened. All of a sudden now, you can't understand. You can't. You're sitting there right now. I don't quite understand what Bishop is saying. You need to ask God to deliver you. Because cause now what I'm talking, I'm talking simple, old time, black and white, far gone conclusion, truth. That today is confusing, complex. You sound judgmental when it's simple stuff. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. When you get saved, when you get sanctified, you come out. When you get saved, it's just simple. Night where you want to be saved and be a Mason. Saved and a Zeta. Veta, Retta. Omega, say baby. All that. When, when time passed, when we got saved. Oh, you don't like me today. In time passed, when you got saved, God called us out. Now, now, we can't understand. You are a, you're saved and you have committed your soul to the Lord and yet you take a vow to join, whether you call it a fraternity or, soror or anything, you take a vow to join something that in the vow it tells you that you can't leave. You take a vow to join something that God never endorsed, that in your vow you say that if you betray it, may your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. And you mean to tell me you can't understand what's wrong with that? And if that, for a, if that is a ritual, for there to be the presence of a ritual that must, by definition, be the presence of of a God, but you can't give a ritual to the God of the Bible and he accepted if it's a ritual that he didn't call for. Show me, and I'll get on television and take it back. Show me in the scripture where we're called to be these things. Talked to a man the other day. He said, well, I joined this certain group because it helped me with my college. They, they helped me with this. They helped me with that. And I said to him, it was very polite. I said, oh, I'm not denying the good works that certain organizations do. Every time I see one of them Shriners commercials, I'm so impressed with what they do to help children. I said, but let me, let me submit to you Paul was a part of the Sanhedrin. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Paul was touching the law blameless. Paul was a Hebrew amongst Hebrews. Paul was a chief promoter of Judaism. Paul said concerning the law, I'm blameless. Am I right? Let's see the good things, good works of Judaism. Judaism gave us the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue. Judaism gave us the law and the prophets. Judaism gives us Daniel, Moses, Isaiah, or Jeremiah. Old Testament. Judaism have given us prophecies on Jesus Christ. Judaism is the foundation for Christianity. And yet, when Paul got saved, he came out of Judaism. And he said, 
concerning what he learned in Judaism. He says, now nah, I count that as dumb for the more excellent knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if Paul had to give up Judaism and the God of Judaism, the God of Judaism, the God of Judaism is the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, that can't be said about the God of Freemasonry. Because the God of Freemasonry, Jesus Christ is not mentioned in, I, I got the book, he's not mentioned. The God of the Bible is not the God of Freemasonry. Jehovah is not the God of Freemasonry. So then, how uh, is, can you then, you don't like me now. You, you know what? Now, now you want me to be a blind watchman. See? Now you want me to be a dumb dog. Because I'm all up in your Kool-Aid. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Now, if the God of Judaism, of which Jesus Christ is all through it, all in it. Jesus said, Jesus said the whole, says, search the scriptures, talk about Judaism. In them you think you have eternal life. Say, every one of them testify of me. That's what Jesus said. Amen. So now, if Paul had to come out of that, what about these other organizations of which none of them, and, and if I'm wrong, y'all show me and I'll give, make a public apology, none of them have in their founding documents, in their mission statement, the promotion of Jesus Christ. Well, what about making a football team and joining a team? You ain't got to make a vow. You had to make a ritual. Just go out and hit somebody. It's not a religion. It's a game. It's a sport. Paul used sports metaphors all the time. But he considered the knowledge of Christ to be so superior that he came out of everything for that. And now we see these things trying to creep up and make their way into the holiness church. And more and more uh, of our preachers, the style is, oh, don't say anything. Don't say nothing. Don't say anything. You don't want to get killed. It may hurt you later. It may hurt you up the road. John, my, my, my thing is this right here. If, if, if I got the, if the only way to move up is to be a dumb dog. Right. So I can't say nothing. So I'm mute. I just want to stay where I am and say what God says. You know, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay right here on my little level That's right. That's right. and be the Lord's voice right. then to get elevated to the top of some organization. But once I get up there, it is required once you get there that you become a blind watchman and a dumb dog. Now, it's required if that's what gets you there. Right. See, now, if you got to become that to get this, you can't get there, and all of a sudden, now you got something to say. It doesn't work like that. It don't work that way. Uh -huh. See, you, you, you have to be consistent. And God rebuked them. He rebuked them for their laziness. He rebuked them for their willingness, lack of willingness to tackle some of these issues. The Lord is calling us out. The Lord is calling us out. And, and at least, and, 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 and you know what I've done? I did it intentionally. I want to give you, so I want you to think about it. And I said to the brother, as I talked with him, I said, brother, I challenge you to be Pauline in your thinking. For if you are Pauline, Pauline, the Apostle Paul, if you adopt Paul's style, you're going to come out. Because he came out of everything. Amen. Came out of everything. Even changed his name. Came, came out of everything. And said, you know what? Not only do I want to come out of this. But he says this right here. Ah, uh, here's why I came out. He says, that I might know him. 
And I want to know the power of his resurrection. Now you can't know that unless you're willing to die. But not only that, now, now I'm going to lose you. He said, and the fellowship of his sufferings. In other words, I want to suffer like Jesus. I, 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 want to know, I want the full experience of being a believer. See, some of us want the experience of being a believer, but we just want the upside. You don't want the full experience. Because when the other stuff come in, I don't know. I, I didn't sign up for all this. I'm amazed at these married couples. They stood up there and said for better or for worse. Said it in front of everybody. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. Sickness show up. Worse show up. Poor show up. Then you say I didn't sign up for it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You said it. What am I going to do? Go home with your poor self, sick self, worse self, and trust God to make it better. And he will. Won't he do it? Let me have a few folk to say amen. Won't he do it? Young preacher come running back. Pastor, they hurt my, they hurt my feelings. I, I got hurt. I got hurt. I got hurt. It hurt my feelings. I thought you said you wanted to work in the church. I thought you said you wanted to work in the church. Part of working in the church is getting your feelings hurt. Pastor, I, I'm the only one in my family saved. I'm uh, the, don't nobody like holiness in my house but me. And I just, I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I thought you wanted Jesus. I thought you wanted all of this. That's what you were saying last Sunday. Lord, give it all to me. Yeah. We sing all the promises in the books of mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. Then when those promises begin to come, Lord, I wasn't talking about that, but that's what he's talking about. I want to know you. I want to know you. Saints, my prayer is that I not be a blind shepherd and that I not be a dumb dog, but that I tell you, as I have done today, things that are, are admonitions. This is not a negative message. It's a positive one. God has blessings for you. God has things for you. But there's a duty. There's a duty. There's a duty. And for those who, who want to who wanna know him better, who want to get closer to God, who want to get closer to God, come to the altar. <laughs>